Hey. How's What's it going? Up? It's Friday. TGI Friday. I'm out of water. So, of welcome to the... Cars. You're out of cars. Because <laughs> you had a supply of cars before, and now you don't. And water. Can you... <laughs> See, I'm, I'm out of crime, man. There's there's no more crime in this town. It's not an issue when I Whoa, throw things on back. the ground, because I'll clean them up. Yeah, your crime came back. That's what <laughs> happens with crime. You lock up crime, and the crime comes back, because it doesn't pay. And if it doesn't pay, it can't afford the rent where you sent it. Oh, so, oh, so it has to come home. Yes. It's like living back in your parents' basement. Yes. All the criminals are like, man, like we, we tried to leave, and then we weren't very like successful so we came back you should tell them to like That's steal cute. better stuff yeah, next time they, yeah yeah they need training yeah they need crime training like you know can you can you can you imagine like i mean there surely people must learn crime somehow like crime school yeah like crime school like i mean obviously not in north america or like anywhere with a government that's paying attention at all but like can you imagine like an actual crime school? opening up a crime school in like, you know, middle of Africa somewhere? somewhere. Yeah, where it's like okay, and 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 like it, the well, act, like actually not have it be like child soldiers, like 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 actually have it be like like just yeah, we're just gonna like, teach like, you how to do the things. Like a pop up ad in your browser that's like for only you know five thousand dollars, we'll help you make however much a day through a life of crime. And they, it actually includes like a legitimate plane ticket. You go there. There's classes. There's there's practical Here's how you use studies. A bolt cutter. Yeah, bolt cutter. Well, no, no, because there's there's a lot more than that. Like there's a lot of like tricks of the trade. Like when we had a lot of the security done on this place, they're like, yeah, this is what they do, and this is what they do, and this is what they do. And I'm sitting here going, how do they all know how to do this? Well, crime school. Maybe you and I are just smart enough that we never clicked the link. Uh huh. Maybe this woman is making ten thousand dollars a week in Canada. Is actually crime school. Maybe it's crime Canadian school. crime school. Yeah. Wow. But not the crime school in Canada. The people come back to Canada with criminal knowledge. Oh. Okay. Yeah. But you can advertise to people currently in Canada. Yeah, because I mean, it's it's like it's it's sketchy advertising, sketchy sites, you know, where you see those kinds of things. I mean, obviously, you know, LinusTechTips.com is not going to have crime school banner ads. No. And if we did, you know, we'd charge a lot for them, so there'd be a good justification a for them to be there. Yeah. Yeah. We should probably. That's because one this of our show. guys went to marketing school. <laughs> Which is maybe not that different from crime school. Might be pretty similar. We also have someone who went to law school. Not that different from crime school. In I fact, they learned a lot about crime. Pretty much the same. Yeah. I mean, so it's ma just so maybe so maybe the law school schools of law. are crime schools. Yes. <gasps> Police Academy is crime school. Yes. The police, okay, so the law academy is like metaphysical crime school, and the police academy is like quite definitely physical. Yeah, like crime practical. School. Yeah. Practical application, practical application crime application. school. Yeah, so it's like theory versus practical. Yeah. BCIT versus UBC. Well, I think they both have they oh, both wait. have the opposite as well because in law you'll have some practical training like how to write or a letter that will courtroom essays yeah enable a, a crime to be committed and not be punished right and the same in same in police academy they're gonna have like they're gonna have theoretical studies as well yeah 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 that totally makes sense. I get it. It's just like what one you want your strength to yeah, be Yeah, so, I mean... But you do get an all-around either way. Yeah, we still have... I mean, if you went we to super... We have formal crime school. Super criminal school. That right. would be both law school and police academy, and maybe like... Get a degree in both. And maybe like some programming mixed okay. in. Super, yeah. Super criminal school. Yeah, networking stuff. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Basic scripting. I mean, that's the only difference between, you know, the so-called first world... And the rest of the world is that naming. It's it, it's it's all spin. Yeah, it's spin. Yeah. People are probably wondering what the hell show it is that they're watching. This um, is the Wan it, show. It is the Wan show. We are going to actually have a show at some point today. Sometimes just... the sometimes unrecognizable, the unapologetically unrecognizable <laughs> Wan show. So uh, God, this week we've one. got some uh, call out topics. Uh, Hulk Hogan might have single handedly taken out both his friendship. And Gawker Media. Actually, if I remember correctly, like his friend was cool with it. Oh. I don't know if that story's true. Um, there's a grocery store in Sweden with no staff. None. None at all. 
AMD made announcements. Many like announcements. Lots of them. Also, yes. Oculus has 30 VR games that'll be ready at launch. Oh, hi. Well, I'm just trying to center the heads on the table. Okay, let's just roll the intro. <laughs> What the crap? Oh, crap. No. Uh, no. Okay, well, no. Uh, there. Hold on. I got uh, this. Ah, Back space! Ooh, deep dive, deep dive sessions. sessions. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, wow. Dang it. Uh, Dollar, Dollar Shave Club! Club. Squarespace! Uh, you should. You should. No, no, you have to. You should do what? Build it beautiful? But that's not their current. Do we care? No. <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, all right, guys, so we've got a pretty, uh, pretty good, pretty good show for you guys today, I hope. That was um, definitely not prepped at crime school. Yeah, that was not, that it contains none of our knowledge from crime school, because quite frankly, if you're going to go to crime school, you're going to have to pay for tuition. That's yep. how school works. Yep. Okay? Yep. Crime school tuition. Yep. It's like, uh... It's like, <laughs> can, I mean, can you imagine the invoice they send you? Like, I would double check that. <laughs> invoice from criminals. Extra it's zero like, here yeah, or there. Extra zero. <laughs> give, give us your credit card. Trust us. <laughs> it's okay. And then if you, if you pay for, you know what? That's probably the final exam. If you pay for crime school. You fail. You fail. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to find some way to not pay. <laughs> and then they just have to make the tuition insane yeah. so the people that do pay end up paying for everyone else. Yeah. And, and, I mean, you know, not every criminal is the most brilliant person on the face of the earth. So you got to imagine that some of the people who fail their final exam probably pay to try again. Yep. So they can subsidize the people who are passing. Oh, definitely. And not paying. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Strong business model. So you know, you have a, a much more interesting story about this than I do. This was okay. originally posted by Chi, Ch Chev BHD on the forum. I'm just going to pull up the original article here from Anon Tech and post it in the uh, good old Twitch chat Maruni. Here we go. AMD to showcase latest innovation. Okay, well, this is just the general coverage. Dang it, where's the... Um There's an Ars Technica article about it, if you go back to the thing. Bleeding heck, sir. Bleeding heck indeed. In crime school, they, tell you, they teach you how to say cool things like bleeding heck. Sulon Q. Hold on, I'm just going to throw this in the Twitch chat so you guys can Already did. check that bit. Oh. Mega All right. right. AMD powered Sulon Q is like wearing a VR capable Windows Sulon. PC on your head. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience with this? When was it? Okay, Because that's so important. It was a little bit ago. It wasn't this year. So I believe it was CES 2015. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was CES 2015. Okay. Um, there was the Sulon Cortex. Okay. Uh, we figured out that they were on the floor. But we never covered it. No, but we really tried. Um, we super duper tried. Brandon's walking away over there. Brandon definitely remembers. Hey, Brandon, remember the Sulon Cortex? Yeah, he just said it was terrible. That's basically the conclusion here. Okay. Um, when I saw this headline, AMD announces Sulon Q, I did multiple double takes, which actually equals something that isn't a double take. I did like a quadruple or whatever the six version would equal. But I like had, I, 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 I checked multiple. Uh, if you can find out what he wants, sure. He doesn't usually do that unless it's a problem. Hello, Mape. One of our forum moderators. When you're screen sharing, there's really, really loud chirping, and it's quite painful. Chirping? Fantastic! We had problems screen sharing last week, too, so I don't know what's going on. Thanks, Mape! Thanks, Mape! Okay, bye. Okay. Well, I'll, uh, I'll attempt to diagnose that in the background here. So, uh, um, carry on. Anyways, so, yeah, so it was at that point in time called the Sulon Cortex. I can tell you right now, it's changed a lot. 
Um, even just the specs are way improved. Uh, we don't know the battery life, all that kind of stuff, but it has a built-in 256 gigabyte SSD, four compute cores, eight cores unlocked through heterogeneous system architecture. It has a four core FX 8800P processor, OC to around 3.4 gigahertz, really? runs Windows 10, has an R7 graphics card, no information other than that. Um, yeah, so the specs have taken a big jump upwards. That might have something to do with AMD theoretically like acquiring them. Um, it's, it just says with Toronto-based startup Sulon Technologies. This is another Toronto startup that I was super excited for and then was super let down by. The, the watch was one of those as well. Right. But basically what happened was we went there. I was super excited that Sulon Cortex was at CES because I had seen and heard tons of stuff about them. It was supposed to be this awesome experience. They had cameras on the front of the headset so you could do like augmented reality stuff, but then it was completely tether free because it's all in the headset. Super cool. Brandon and I went to go check it out almost first thing, CES 2015. Mm -hmm. It like, I'm comfortable saying literally didn't work at all. Um, yeah. So we were like, can we come back? And they encouraged that. So we went back later, still didn't work. Did that again, went back later, still didn't work. I think we did it one more time. Went back, was able to fight our way through two demos that were both gratuitously horrible. So I didn't end up releasing a video about it because I didn't think the communication to the audience would have been worth them watching. Um, and now AMD has announced iteration two, I guess, called the Sulon Q. So hopefully it's good. Okay. That's basically all. Hopefully it's good. That. That's all you have to say. I'm, I'm really, like, the specs look way better. If AMD can pull those specs off, it could be sweet. I mean, all they're saying is Radeon R7 graphics card, which tells us absolutely nothing mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. i mean you could call anything an r7 graphics it could card. be a 240. that's true it could be a 240 it could it could literally be not much more powerful than like a high-end tablet um and i don't know I mean, what it is i'm hopeful here's okay so but he, but this is another this thing seems that like I, the wrong direction for amd to go with. yeah and th there's another thing that i don't really understand about this product did you watch the video uh no i actually didn't Oh, that won't help you understand things. They spend the entire video just saying together. first. Okay. It might be really loud chirping noises. In here. Nope, I fixed it. Okay. Um, I haven't used this capture card in a long time because I was having some issues with it. Um, but the new driver fixed some issues, but didn't fix the issues that it seems to be my laptop having. I think I need to update my sound drivers because I was trying to stream from my laptop yesterday and I was having issues with that too. Oh my God. What is this? My dad texted me, so I thought it was important because it's during the show. He just texted me, just wanted to say you're a noob. Thanks, your dad's dad. awesome, by the way. Thanks, Dad. I, I like your dad. <laughs> it's a cool guy. What, what is this? Yeah, it's uh, really, really, really close-up shots of the headset. There you go. That's the headset. So the compute unit, I think, is partially on the back or entirely on the back. So basically, it's Gear VR, but bulky. I mean... I, uh, it's probably... And, and <laughs> it won't be running experiences that are tailored for a lightweight, for lightweight hardware like, and operating systems like Android. It'll be running full fat Windows 10. With VR experiences that are like... I mean, it's all about when you want to adopt something. You want to adopt the same one that everyone else is adopting to have at least some chance of ongoing support from third parties because it's simple business if i'm a third party making a piece of software a pc vr experience <laughs> am i going to target the htc vive which sold what was it fifteen thousand units within 10 minutes or something absurd just and completely obscene like looks amazing and looks point. awesome or would i go after the oculus rift which is the just you know favorite favorite nephew of the entire industry um, where both like of those companies yeah, the touch controllers come out. where both of those companies are saying yep you're going to need a super powerful PC in order to have the experiences that we expect you to have on our headset or you're going to target this thing which who's going to buy like who's going to buy this so like you and the other 16 people who buy it 
are going to expect okay. a, a software developer to make an experience for this that's going to be good. I genuinely don't know if I will. And I know that might be kind of surprising because I, I basically said I'm going like, to buy it. If you will, what? You were considering it? No, well, you said you and the other... So like I'm oh not, no yeah I mean I'm like, not it's a, the main reason why I didn't release a video I've released videos from shows and I've released videos from around the office where I tear things apart before I could have done that again the reason why I didn't was because I didn't want this thing to get press I've been bad. actively worried it was it was bad I've been actively worried the entire time since DK one was announced that I I don't really want bad press about bad products around VR. Right. If there's if there's bad press about the Vive or if there's bad press about the Rift, maybe they deserved that. I don't know what it would have been. There's been pretty good press about both of them, so I don't I don't I'm not saying anything. I just like if there happened to be for whatever reason, um, then they need to get their act together and keep on moving up, and they can fix it, and then they can keep going. Both of those headsets and the Gear VR to a lesser degree are doing a good job of showing like this is what VR can be. Right. Actually, uh, Vive especially has shown off that like this can be for a wider audience. Yeah, you can walk around and explore Everest. You yeah. can do all these like super cool things. Like, awesome! You guys are doing great. I want to talk about that so that people hear it and get excited. So you, I don't want to talk. You about don't want this. to talk about how long an FX 8800P processor overclocked to 3.4 gigahertz is going to run on battery when it's strapped to your head. Yeah. Like. Actually, specifically, I don't really. Can you that. imagine how warm that would be between the headset across the front of your face and a computer taped to the back of it? I think like, wait for a second. Yeah, I mean, did they even say anything about weight? Not no weight or battery. No weight or battery spec. Um, that thing is not big enough to have a decent battery, and it <sighs> is too big to be light. But then you know, here's something though. I don't know what an FX 8800P is. Does anyone know what an FX 8800P is? I've never heard of that. FX 8800P. This is a notebook processor. I didn't even know oh, did you still made that? notebook processors. Hold I on. think the R7 bit. Okay, so what is, what is it? Oh. Integrated. So is probably. it some kind of like APU or something yeah. like that? By the look of things. So, so let's just let's just have a quick let's have a quick look at what this gander over here. Products.amd.com page has on it. Man, their site is slow. Okay, uh, but I because everyone's just super excited for the Suvon Q. Specification. Why am I on the French page? Well, whatever, okay. Uh, Fondation uh, OPN. O -O -P -N okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Total Cash L2. I, I, love, I love how French just gets butchered when it comes to technical terms. A it's lot like, of languages do. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Version PCI Express. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so four hearts. Um, <laughs> eight GPU cores. <laughs> so here are their cores, here are their curse. Uh, <laughs> AMD, you don't get to do this. You don't just get to add up CPU and GPU cores and just be like, yeah, it has 12 cores. Uh, four, four threads. It's kind of 12 total cores. Uh, vitesse d'horloge de basse, okay. And 3.4 gigahertz is not overclocked, so the article seems to have missed that. That is a max turbo. And it is a 15 watt TDP processor. Okay, so we're not talking about necessarily like a, a, like a tablet processor, but it's, it's definitely a notebook processor. It's one that I've never seen in a laptop. 800 megahertz R7. Wow, they're not even saying like how many stream processors it has or anything like that. So this is some, this is some underpowered nonsense. Oh. So what this means to me then anyway, is if we're looking at a 28 nanometer AMD chip with four cores, um, maybe this just isn't about gaming at all then. Maybe- This was the first VR experience that I wanted to quit. Oh. I mean, they're talking about, you know, the the uh, the, the the virtual mapping of the environment well, around Well, okay, you. not this. The Sulon Cortex one. Yeah, right. I have not tried the queue. I have no idea what the experience is like. I can guess. <laughs> Why would you even need wireless keyboard and mouse support? What would you do with a keyboard and mouse with this thing strapped to your head? I can't think of a reason. To have a thing. How does it have wireless keyboard and mouse support? I don't know. Well, Bluetooth, I guess. But like, why would you ever care? 
Why did, <laughs> okay, fine, we're done. Um, let's let's pull up the Anantech article that, uh, are you copying that into Twitch chat? Yeah. Uh, let's pull up the Anantech article that should have some, oh no, this, this article is not an article. This is just a link to an investor relations page and their webcast announcement page. So, way to go, Colton. Um, okay, let's talk GP roadmap. roadmap. Yeah. So, yeah, original article here is from PC Perspective. Good job, PC Per. Yeah, go Mr. Shrout. Actually, John Walworth, but, you know, whatever. Mr. Shrout gets Josh. at least some of the... Did I, say, did I say John? Oh, sorry, sorry. I still had the Hulk Hogan story on the mind. We'll talk more about that later. We will. Um, so, some hints at what comes next. I love these GPU architecture roadmap slides because they're just so completely meaningless. Yeah. A, A, okay, so A, it's gazing into the crystal ball, which hasn't actually worked out very well for us over the last uh, two to three years where we've been like looking at these like great slides of like how much better GPUs are gonna be. But then you have to read the fine print too because the thing that they're telling you doesn't necessarily even have a whole lot to do with what you would wanna know. This is a performance per watt graph, which is like it could potentially what? <laughs> even get worse in terms of. I'm not saying it it is. I mean, I'm just Intel saying, came like, out and said that. Yeah, well, like like, our, like our CPUs could get worse. Yeah, like theoretically, the performance could go down. Yeah, if the wattage used goes way down, that graph is still possible. Then that comes up with, and then we end up with like a really like super like awesome looking graph. So. Polaris is 2.5x performance per watt. So what we're sort of hoping for, I guess, is between sometime in 2016, we're going to get that, and we're going to see maybe similar power draw or hopefully a little bit less. Maybe a little bit less power draw than current AMD top-tier cards, and maybe about, hey, 1.5 to 2x the performance. And then Vega is like even like way better sort of-ish. So so about what, as much better three again. Three times or really Fe features HBM two. Yeah, maybe actually. Yeah, it's okay. actually not that much. Not that much different. It just it looks more it's impressive closer. because nothing happened between the end of 2014 <laughs> and the middle of 2016. Literally nothing happened on the AMD side of things. Yeah. Um, so Vega is looking like another similar improvement, and then they're like, oh yeah, it's going to take a little bit longer, and then we're going to have Navi sort of later. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, what else we got here? Why can't I, why, why can't I move over? What's wrong with your thing? There we go. Oh. HBM1 is limited in the next gen parts. Okay, so that's some more news out of AMD that I guess is, is fascinating. Um, I guess we, we already kind of knew this. The word on the street is that NVIDIA's flagship at least to start with Pascal, which is not big Pascal, that's gonna be the next step down yeah. Pascal, is gonna be using GDDR5X. Um, mm. So it's probably just one of those things where NVIDIA would have maybe loved to use HBM, but because they're moving a much higher volume of parts than AMD, there may simply not be enough HBM for AMD, let alone for someone like NVIDIA to come in and put it on yeah, you know, a hot selling SKU like a replacement for something like the GTX 970. Um, what else we got here? AMD announces the absolutely most powerful graphics card in the world. So our original article here is from Legit Reviews. And this, my friends, is the Radeon Pro Duo. It features three. PCI Express 8-pin power connectors. Wow. Woo. Woo! It features liquid cooling. Which is probably smart. And it features pretty much two R9 Furies on a single card. Pretty impressive. So having a look at some Fire Strike numbers here, it is... Uh, you know, definitely faster than an R9 295X2. It is definitely faster than a GTX Titan Z, which is the last dual GPU card that NVIDIA released. Um, total, total flop, the Titan Z was. <laughs> they didn't even bother to redo a, a Titan, a dual GPU card for the flagship GPU of this generation. And uh, yeah, so it has, it has definitely taken back 
you know, if 3D Mark scores are something to sort of go on, it has definitely taken back the most powerful graphics card award for AMD. It's we don't know if we're getting one. I have been in touch. Okay. Um, they had said they wanted to give us a briefing before talking about sampling, so I, I actually CC'd you and John on the email because you guys would probably be the ones to, to get briefed on it. When did you do this? Earlier this week. When was the briefing? Uh, well, no, they never replied. So they haven't actually they haven't actually sent any information about the briefing. So hopefully that's coming I don't soon. Think I saw this email. Yeah, hopefully we will uh, we will get some kind of coverage for you guys. Um, it, the card has a combined eight gigs of HBM memory, so we are seeing um, I guess GTX six ninety syndrome again. Where, like, yeah, okay, it's, like, really powerful, but the problem with the 690 is that because it only had 2 gigs of RAM per GPU, that was effectively 2 gigs of RAM. So, whether it's HBM allocation or whether it's the complexity of adding more of it to the board, AMD is limited to 4 gigs of HBM memory per core, which is effectively 4 gigs for the entire system because the way that Crossfire and SLI work at this time is that they are not able to just go, okay, well each GPU has 4 gigs, so now we've got 8 gigs total, um, making, you know, and responded. making other cards of similar power that come out in the future, whether they are based on Pascal or whether they're based on Polaris, probably make more sense to wait for. I'm not a huge fan of dual GPU cards, and there are a wide variety of reasons for that, not the least of which is the fact that the drivers for them, it comes down to what I was talking about before. You are better off investing in something that more people are gonna buy because it puts more pressure on the manufacturer to fix it if there's a problem. So we had an issue in Scrapyard Wars 3 mm -hmm. where Austin's system, because he had, uh, what, what was it? 295X2, wasn't it? No, no, it was, uh, it was a 6990. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Had yeah. a 6990. Yeah, not, yeah. Couldn't run PC Mark because there is no way in AMD's, on AMD's dual GPU cards, so single card dual GPU, to disable Crossfire. There were some guides we found and there were some people suggesting that there were ways to do it, but we did not successfully disable Crossfire because even though you can do it when you've got two cards in one system, you just, but, but it, nope, you just can't. And it, it felt like, because you were supposed to do it on like an application based level in order yeah. to disable Crossfire. Like th and there was like some weird tool. Yeah, yeah, there didn't seem to be any, well, it's not that weird. It's a pretty common tool, but anyways, it does other stuff. That's it why wasn't the problem. AMD driver, which means it's not good enough. Okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna argue that. It is a relatively common tool though. Anyways, um, so you're supposed to disable it on an application-based level. You don't just turn off Crossfire at all and let your computer see two individual separate GPUs. Which I kind of get. Like, PCI Express is complicated. It's not simple. Yeah, that's fair. So having a single interface, like, okay. But then I guess it didn't pick up the application properly or the application wasn't reporting properly or something. I don't know what was going on, yeah. but it just wasn't working and was going straight crossfire right into the application. So it was like, nah, okay. Nothing else we can really do. Um, so yeah, I would recommend whether you're on the uh, red team or the green team, I would wait for a single GPU card that is going to not only deliver probably very similar okay. performance, but, uh, sir, what? Echo. What, go? Echo? Echo? For what? I don't know, apparently there's an echo. I have literally not touched the computer. So. Why is this happening? Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're on the wench show. Everything is awesome when you echo, echo. No. Oh, that was pretty good. Whoa. I wonder how many echoes they're going to hear of you saying that. Echo, yeah. Um, got some people what saying What if we echo fine. ourselves? This is good enough. What if we echo ourselves? What if we echo each other? <laughs> what if we echo each other? Each other. Each other. Each other. Each other. Each other. Each other. Um, People are like you unplugged something. No, I didn't. Um, my ha my hands have been my my hands have been visible the whole time. You actually didn't. If I unplugged anything, it was uh, it was definitely in my pants. So okay, let's go ahead and move on to our next topic. 
Polaris 11 running 4K VR content pictured. Few Polaris 10 details. So uh, Ryan Shrout tweeted, I did get to see AMD's Polaris 11 GPU running passively while playing back 4K VR content last night. Pretty impressive. Dun dun dun. For Polaris 10, the sample used during their event had five display outputs, three display port 1.3s, <clears throat> 8K, 8K, mm. HDMI 2.0, finally, thank you AMD, and DVI-D dual link. Although it still bothers me that AMD has removed VGA output from their cards entirely. I don't remember why, but it inconvenienced me not that long ago when I was stuck with VGA and I had an AMD card and I was like, ah, oh, crap. Cannot do. According to VR World, the PCB of the Polaris 10 engineering sample was not much bigger than the R9 Nano. So AMD is taking this whole, yep, we are serious about improving efficiency and reducing the size. Let's see if we have a picture. Well, the Nano is a damn cool card. Yep. So like, I don't blame them for going that direction. And if you're running HBM memory, you don't have to have all those traces and all that additional PCB complexity, so you might as well simplify things and improve compatibility with smaller cases while you're at it. Now, with that said, what we have observed about the R9 Nano is there aren't really a whole lot of cases that can handle the thermals but are not designed for a larger 10 and a half inch sort of NVIDIA reference yeah. card these days. But if AMD keeps this up, problems with the bomb. maybe we'll see that change. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think the problems with the bomb were as much uh, operator error as hey, anything else. Hey, that was mean. I thought it was cool. Hey, it's not like you don't go after me about the servers periodically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> frequently. Well, it's fair game. Frequently, like quite frequently. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah. To be fair, I think the servers have more problems than the bomb did. Had enough of uh, had enough of your crap. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Want to talk about the crazy nuck? Um, the, like absolutely insane nuck. Yeah, let's talk about the nuck. So uh, this was uh, originally posted on the forum by Alex Goes High. Have you already posted the PC for right now? All right, let's do it. Meet the new Intel Skull Trail nuck, changing the game. No, no, this is, this is a reference to a demo that Intel did, I think. I think this is a reference to a demo that Intel did back at CES 2015, where they had a Skull Trail system, and they were showing a Skull Trail system accelerating a demo where you could zoom in and zoom out of this like really cool photo manager that like in real time was resizing pictures as you moved in and out of it. And then they also had a NUC running that demo at the same speed. Ooh. Now, that's not because the NUC had the same CPU performance, but because the Skull Trail was running purely on CPU mm. and the NUC was GPU accelerating it. And it was a demo of how the change in the way that we have, in the way that Intel has approached, and the industry as a whole actually, but the way that Intel has approached uh, improving computer power has allowed new experiences with much lower power consumption. It was oh, I love that logo. I, yeah, I know. I've right? never looked at a NUC and been like, that looks sick. So this that is the actual sick. device. So tell us about it then. I, 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 you're just staring I, I, at it. You're just, you're just, it looks nice. You're just a, a gape. It has an i7-6700HQ processor with a 45 watt TDP. Holy crap. Like, real deal, kids. I wasn't sure if I cared when I saw a NUC, because I don't really care about NUCs. And then I read that, and I was like, Dual okay, M.2 slots, you know, whatever. Intel Iris Pro Graphics 580, which you probably could have discerned. Um, Thunderbolt 3, 40 gigabit per second with USB 3.1, and uh, DisplayPort 1.2 over USB-C. Holy crap, that's badass. Support mm -hmm. for DDR4 memory up to 32 gigs at some speed, which probably doesn't matter, but it's 2133. Yep. Um, full size HDMI 2.0 port, so he's going to be happy again. Yep. Uh, Intel dual band wireless AC. HDMI 2.0 uh, is kind of a big deal. Just saying. It is. I know. I know. Okay. I, know. I, know. I was just saying, like, specifically. Just saying. Can, I, I know. I'm not Everyone saying it should is, be happy. I'm, I'm not saying they aren't. <laughs> SD card slot. Uh, that's good. That's good to have. Hey, I I like the SD card slot. Standard you like should be happy audio, too. gigabit LAN, stuff like that. Infrared sensor, so that could actually be kind of cool. Yeah. People could do some stuff with that. This is like one BA little machine. 
It ships with two lids, one with the skull logo, which you should probably use, and one with a plain matte black, which is a good idea for them to include. Also matte black. Good you idea know, for them to include. It's really funny talking to Intel people, and I hope I'm not like saying something that I, you know, someone told me in confidence or anything. I don't think so. But talking to Intel people about how edgy putting a skull on something is internally at Intel. Meanwhile, it's like skulls are so passe man yeah. like when was that even edgy like like yeah, we're talking like no fear clothing yeah, yeah. like yeah. putting evil eyes on things is like edgy <laughs> intel you're like stuck in the 90s on I the thought, one hand and you're it's like, not even like a bone style sc- it's like this cool like uh, it's very stylized, outline, yeah. Like it like, looks like a, it looks like a circuit board. Like it's very in, yeah. Intel. So on the one hand, you're this like forward-looking, like working on crap that you and I won't touch for ten to twenty years. Company, and on the other hand, you can't figure out that a skull is not Ooh, edgy anymore. We're not sure about skulls. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's you know too. We too might scare aggressive. the children. Scare, yeah, it's too Make scary. sure you ship it with a matte black cover as well. Yeah, you know, just in case. Oh, because we're too afraid of skulls or something. <laughs> um, so now, to be clear, it's not as small as your grandpa's it's a, knuck. It's it's a point six nine liter though, which yeah. is like pretty damn small. So it's still small. So you know, like a quart of milk for the Americans or a liter of milk for the non-Americans, it's still only about seventy percent of that, which is, which is not that small. So it's about it's pretty small. 20 centimeters long, about 8 inches long. I'm, I'm doing rough math. I know that's not quite right. Um, by 11 centimeters wide by 23 millimeters, so only about an inch thick. So it is very, very small, pretty darn high powered, and still not good enough to run a VR experience and be strapped to the back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. Oh my god, shots fired. I did not expect that. <laughs> I was not prepared for that. That was good. That was that was good. Um, but what you could do is, you know, like this doesn't work. Don't worry. I know it doesn't work. It's okay. You could get one of these and then get one of those like external graphics card enclosures and just hang the whole thing. It actually could work. <laughs> How? How could you hook it up to this? Uh, Thunderbolt. It's got Thunderbolt, yo. No, but wouldn't that be... That could... Oh, because then you could go out oh, from Oh, that the, could... Oh, that could work. We have to do that work. now. <laughs> I that didn't could think totally that was work. work. No, because... Because in my head, I saw one output, but then you just go to the graphics card and then okay. go from the graphics card to the... How long do you think... <laughs> okay. How long do you think... You... <laughs> I didn't think that was going to work. How long do you think you could carry, like, an APC <laughs> UPS around on your back in a backpack? <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> if we could run one of these nucks with, like, yeah. a Razor Core, okay? So, like... <laughs> With like a GTX 980 Ti. This is the Ti. stupidest thing because we could just do a laptop. Oh, but that's so mainstream. <laughs> that is way too mainstream. Not cray cray enough for Linus Tech. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm no. down. I'll like specifically work out. Like for we this. would, like we would have to, like we would have to actually get like like a metal framed hiking backpack. Yep, right? I have one. No, but we'd have to butcher it. We should go to like okay. we should go to like like a swap Buy used store. One yeah, and yeah, like chop like like sec play. What what is that? Re, re, sports replay or like like yeah, a yeah, secondhand yeah. Yeah. equipment store because so, all we really want is the is the, the frame. metal frame, and then we would have to basically find a way to get like some kind of a UPS on there to power the graphics card and the NUC, and you'd only be able to play for probably like nine minutes. Like I hope you know that already. Because the battery. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because like that kind of a graphics card sucking back like a couple hundred watts, like n- no UPS that you can <laughs> physically carry, is designed to run for longer than like you know, 10 to 15, maybe 20 <laughs> minutes. But oh that God. would be bananas. Does HTC and Valve, do HTC and Valve intend to have, like, lighthouses on steroids? What do, do you, you know? What do you mean? Like, lighthouse units, but, like, on steroids. So you could, you know, they're lighthouses, right? Yeah, but I don't understand the on steroids. On steroids is, like, if we had an empty warehouse, say, for example... Putting it in the corners of it. Oh. Uh. I mean, theoretically. They, they have the play box dimensions. Like, no. So we'll have to wait for yeah. a new generation of, happen. of UPS batteries 
That is much lighter. And a new generation of lighthouses. We should just, we should just get, like, attach, like, a wire frame around my waist and have, like, big, long wire arms go out that hold the lighthouses. Now that's just dumb. Oh, I don't know. It was a great idea up until then. What a dick. <laughs> what a dick. We could also just, like, have a helmet with a pole going out on it and then hang uh, an Oculus one. Or a Mac Pro, so you could selfie your VR experience. <laughs> the Mac Pro is just for selfies. Did you see that? Did you not see the Mac Pro selfie stick? No. Someone did it as, oh, like, an Oh, no, project. I did see that. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 People are like, WTF, Luke. This used to be a Dennis stream. <laughs> we need to bring back Dennis. I tried last time. It didn't really work that well. People, someone's like, worst, worst when show ever. So not worst, uh, but it is worse. Worst when show ever. So as long as it's not the best, the best, then technically it is the worst. The worst when show. But is it best or best? Uh, I don't know, but what I do know is that the longer we make fun of the grammar and spelling of our audience, the closer we're getting to it being the worst WAN show ever. <laughs> um, speaking of worst WAN show ever, why don't we talk about the sponsors of today's WAN show? Yeah! DollarShaveClub.com, proud Whoa. sponsor of the worst WAN show ever! So if you guys were thinking to yourself, gee, I've got a neck beard. I want to shave aforementioned neck beard. But I don't want anyone to see my neck beard. How could I get shaving supplies delivered directly to my door for less than it would cost me to go to the grocery store, wait around for someone to unlock the stupid locked cabinet that the freaking, like, between razor blades, printer ink, and perfume. We've got like a trifecta of overpriced Stuff that shouldn't cost that, that much. That you need to use all the time. That you need to use all the time, especially if you're hairy and you stink and you need to make a lot of printer copies. Okay? Then Dollar Shave Club is the answer. <laughs> By going to dollarshaveclub.com, you can get reasonably <laughs> priced shaving supplies delivered straight to oh. your door once a month. And not just razors. No. Also, their aftershave, yeah. their, uh, Dr. Shave butter. their Dr. Carver's shave butter, their Dr. Carver shave butter, and even butt. their peppermint-scented butt wipes for men. So visit dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus and join the club. Yep. In the U.S., Canada, and Australia. In the U.S., Canada, and Australia. If you have a neck beard in Europe, like, I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, then you're just going to have to go out and wear that neck beard loud and proud. I mean, can you imagine having a neck beard that was so bearded that it was legitimately loud? We'd have to have things living in it. <laughs> Which, unfortunately, has probably happened at probably, some point. Probably, yeah. All right, moving on to our next sponsor. This is a more serious sponsor. They don't have butt wipes. What they do have is top-tier managed cloud computing solutions. They've got dedicated storage options to meet your performance, security, network compa capacity, and compliance needs, and they are backed by what they call fanatical support. Which they're really well known for. 24-7, 365, baby. If you have a problem on Christmas Eve or even Christmas Day, that is one of the 365 days in the year, and they will take care of it. Now. This year was a leap year. So unfortunately, <laughs> 19 days ago, you were pretty much SOL. Not true. Because this year had 366 days. Not as, a, they advertised 365, okay? So once They're every better four, than advertised. Once every four years. They underpromise, overdeliver. over-deliver. Rackspace takes a day off. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> uh, so what are we talking about? Rackspace. <laughs> They're inviting you to deep dive oh, sessions. Yeah. They take play, They oh, take about an hour every week or two to discuss benefits of dedicated solutions in a world. I have a link for that. World. So if you um, want to take a Rackspace deep dive, you guys can check that out. Um, the long and short of it is they will, they will discuss you just said it. Um, yep. On March 23rd, they'll have one on improving your operational efficiency, which is like good for everything yep. ever. They typically do about three sessions a month via Google Hangouts, and they will provide you with downloads to reference architecture, ebooks, and white papers on the sessions, landing pages. So it's live with active participation, so you can go ask your questions and interact with them. So there's uh, deep dives coming up on March 23rd and on March 30th. So the second one is how to optimize SQL 
mobile server for performance and reliability. This kind of stuff is just plain beneficial. So check it out. Give yourself a chance to talk to Rackspace experts and learn a little something while you are at it. Which leads us to our last sponsor of the day. Which has out-of-date notes. A totally, a totally uh, serious one as well. Squarespace. Yeah, yeah. What, what, when is the sales team ever going to update our Squarespace notes, sales Maybe team? Maybe this is part of their crime school. You know what we should do? Is we should completely ignore any new Squarespace talking points until they update our talking points. <laughs> I'm going to pretend that I still think Square, Squarespace's slogan is... You know what? You probably should. Simple... Powerful, you beautiful. You should do that. You know what else I'm going to say? I'm going to say that they have 24-7 support via live chat and email. You should say that. Thank you. That would be applicable. I'm going to say that Squarespace starts at only $8 a month, and you get a free domain if you buy Squarespace for a year. You should also say that. That would be accurate. I'm going to say that their templates feature responsive design, so your website scales to look great on any device. You should also say... That they have commerce modules so you, that you can buy stuff and yep, like yep. or well, you can sell stuff or buy stuff from other people. That and have if the notes said anything about cover pages, then you should to, to talk about how you can have a cover page if you want to do something like yep. a resume style website. It's like a simple online presence. And the most important thing that uh, you should cover yeah. is that when you decide to sign up for Squarespace after yes. your two week free trial to try it out and Which see how simple do. it is, you should, should. save. 10% by using offer code Linus, yeah. which um, you should do. You should do. Thank you. Build thank you for Thank you for watching the WAN you show. You should probably build it beautiful. You should probably build it beautiful. You should probably build it simple and powerful too. <laughs> <laughs> it is a miracle that anyone sponsors <laughs> us. Good. Brandon informs us we're making Colton and Nick cringe. I wish we could do more to them. <laughs> but alas, our words are only so powerful from That's down true. here. They, uh, they, they learned to get away from us in crime school. Yeah, crime school. <laughs> what have we even talked about on the show <laughs> today? Know. Broken baby food jar leads to Sweden's first unstaffed grocery store. How does that make any freaking sense? I don't know, but I'll tell you. Sweden IT specialist Robert Woe. Um... <laughs> Ingesen? I'm gonna. I tried. Swedish IT specialist Robert owns a store that is unmanned. It's a, t it's a town. In, yeah, it's in a town in Sweden. The store. Is, this basically, he's trying to feed his. <laughs> I didn't see Nick behind the camera. You do. I see him now. Yeah, basically, he's trying to feed. I believe it was his baby daughter, baby whatever, and he broke a food jar and had to drive really far to find somewhere that was still open because it was really late at night or early in the morning or something. Mm -hmm. And he got frustrated and was like, "Why don't we just have stores that can be open all the time, everywhere?" So he made a store that can be open all the time. You you sign up. There is a credit check that you have to go through. You get an app on your phone that so you can like manage your purchase and stuff. You can just walk in, scan the things that you want, and walk out, and then you get a bill once a month. That is so cool. If the door stays open for longer than eight seconds or is tampered with, uh, Robert will receive an alert. There you go. I mean, to be clear, this isn't the kind of thing that we're is it expecting. Iliasen? To, I don't know. Iliasen? This is uh, this is not the kind of thing that I'm expecting personally to be able to be rolled out in like you know New York or that was terrible. But New York. Whatever, uh, I tried. I'm going there, so I was trying to like. Oh my god. New, no. New York. <laughs> Just screw off. Um, in New York. In, in or like you know L A or whatever anytime soon because you'd need a fair bit more security. But right now it's deployed out in a small town, only about 4,200 residents. So exactly the kind of town, especially in Europe, yeah. like I've noticed that where the grocery store would close at like 4 p.m. Oh my god. And you'd just be like, S -s -s Switzerland, everything closes so early. Well, it was the same thing in Germany. <laughs> yeah. Remember the day we landed in Germany? It was like two in the afternoon and freaking just everything was closed. Dead zone, yeah. Like we couldn't get food. <laughs> yeah. Look, this is ridiculous. Um, so, so it's exactly the sort of environment where something where you would have a lot of trust between members of the community, very small community. Yeah. And you would 
have the frustration of not being able to buy baby food in the middle of the night when your baby's freaking hungry. And like, I don't give a crap about, you know, Sweden, Sweden's and the Swedish people's philosophy about not working too hard and all that stuff when my baby's hungry. So if you can have a store that just plain doesn't need anyone working in it and I can go get a freaking thing of baby food and hey, maybe it could be more expensive so that, you know, you could offset the jobs that'll be lost or whatever and justify something. My first, like, legit non like I'm a ref or a paper boy or I mow your lawn like that kind of stuff my first legit like I get a paycheck every two weeks from a big corporation kind of job was at a grocery store so part of like this story is cool when I go to grocery stores I use automated tills when I go to Home Depot I use automated tills I'm that person already probably horrible because it's contributing to stuff like this which is contributing to massive amounts of especially low-end jobs going away with that said if there was anywhere where i would want to be working at an entry-level job only to have it swept out from under my feet it would probably be sweden because <laughs> yeah. they will probably figure out how to support those people yeah. before yeah. other people but do. a lot of other countries won't <laughs> can you imagine a donald trump america <laughs> supporting people who have lost their jobs yeah uh... You, this is really this is really funny. This is like super super funny. Um, I was reading an article that um, was about it was it was talking to a writer of an episode of The Simpsons from 16 years ago, where like I'm pretty sure every show has done this. Uh, oftentimes it's a Christmas special where the the ghost of the future comes back and shows the character how how their life is you know heading anyway. So it's the episode where Bart. Um, gets to see his future self and he's I, yeah, in like yeah. he's in like a crappy band and he yeah. works in gigs at like Nelson's club and, yeah. and his sister has just just won the presidency of the United States and Milhouse one of her top aides comes in and holds up a, a chart of the of the staggering deficit that they've inherited from President Trump seriously it was Whoa. so it was so ludicrous like and and so the writer's saying like we were trying to write an america's gone crazy like completely unbelievable worst case scenario Simpsons has done that like a few times and that's what we came up well, with like like not like once like they've made crazy predictions like quite a few times and i just Man. i thought it was I thought it was amazing. Didn't they do something with like the iPad or something? I, I'm not sure. Ex I'm not extremely sure. Extremely accurately. What's up, Nick? Can I help you? Yeah, I'm just going to say, you know, if, if you ever actually read the notes, maybe people would give me notes so that I could give you the notes. So Sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry, the microphone can't hear you. <laughs> Nick, Nick's trying to give us crap about not reading his notes. I'm just, I'm just sitting here judging you, man. <laughs> maybe I should come down and talk about you know, how the band shows always 30 minutes late. Hey, Ooh. hey. That was because my capture card stopped working oh, today. This week is my capture card. Last week it was my camera. Next week it's going to be my laptop. <laughs> it actually might be his laptop next week. We had some problems this time. Yeah. My phone's not working. That's why the stream can't start. His phone's not working. I'm just going to build yeah. the wall so that we can't get any notes. My Dreamcast stopped working. <laughs> is that where you cast your dreams of a little bark working in Nelson Park? Yeah. Hey, that's a, that was a cool article. All right, so this next article, the original one, it was posted by Dave Has Landed. What's up, John? On the forum. Oh, Nick, John needs you. Um, it was originally posted on Oculus.com, and that this is looking pretty impressive. We hope, except we've all we seen hope. this story before. I mean, yeah, we hope. Do you remember? Do you remember Valve's whole like, oh yeah, there's so many games for SteamOS. Who cares? Um. Because just because you have a lot have of games doesn't mean that they're good. However, 30 games is more than I expected Oculus to have as like actual VR games, not just games that like will work. Although I said Rift that launch. and I was told that, but looking closely at the list, there's some things that I didn't actually really notice the first time, like Keep Talking Nobody Explodes. Actually, no, that was originally a VR game. It was later made into a non-VR game. Mm -hmm. uh, the, where was the uh, Elite Dangerous... No, that's not the one I was looking for. Where's the Sniper one? I swear to God, I just read a Sniper one. Um, Project Cars. Nope, that probably nope, not what you're I'm thinking. Nope, I'm crazy. Of. I think I dyslexia the crap out of Elite Dangerous and thought it was like the Elite Sniper. Sniper Elite. Called. Sniper Elite, yeah. 
So I guess that's not in here because dyslexia. So everything's fine. Never mind. VR tennis online. Some of these Please things, like rush. okay, Adventure Time, Magic Man's Head Games, makes me excited because it's Adventure Time. Makes me worry that it's rushed because it's five dollars. Do you still follow Adventure Time? No. Oh, okay. Do you? Uh, it was like good and good and good and good and good, and then it kind of lulled, and this kid seems to be getting good again. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. Gun Jack is like that's a that's a Gear VR game. Mm -hmm. It like has no place on Rift because it's just way worse than Valkyrie, and that's like about it. Okay, cool. You just can't move. Cool. And it's now a turret game. Like okay. Um, I don't know. I am I'm like this this well, doesn't a rapid really fire topic I guess. Yeah, doesn't really make much of a difference to me you because get, these could all suck. You get Lucky's Tale for free with every purchase and E Valkyrie with pre-orders. Yeah. Wow, I can't believe they're not just going to another ship it with thing e Valkyrie. That worries me which we already knew, but that worries yeah. me is the E Valkyrie is called Founders Pack. Yeah. Super so, makes it. Yeah. yeah. DLC. DLC or it's like even possibly going to be free to play with purchases, which might even be worse. Um. Okay. So so much for WD not completing their acquisition of Sandisk. Um, it has been overwhelmingly approved on both sides. Sandisk, ninety-eight percent of their shareholders approved the merger, and WD it was about ninety percent. So um, yeah, there you go. So WD officially has. NAND fabrication capacity. Good, Good for them. Yeah. Um, Russian billionaire is saying that he can put your brain into a robot in 30 years. Posted by No Nerg on the forum. He's really confident. He spent a lot of money on it. I think he wants to live forever. I think that's what's going on. I wouldn't mind living forever. You know, it's actually kind of sad because looking at a lot of the advancements that are being made in both transferring consciousness into a machine and uh, slowing or reversing the aging process, I feel like our generation just barely didn't make it. Yeah, we're gonna just slightly miss. Yeah. Like I, can, I could totally see a near future reality where if you agree to sterilization or something like that, you can prolong your life indefinitely or something. Like I, w I, I hope they make people agree to sterilization because the last thing we need is a bunch of people living forever and procreating at the rate that humans do. But um, anyway. Although if you get turned into a robot. Yeah, that would be, yes, then sterilization would be a thing, but. Um, Unless you like have a little, little manufacturing plant. So he founded the 2045 initiative in 2011 with the goal to create a more advanced non-biological carrier for an individual's personality. Um, I'm 100% confident it will happen, he says. Otherwise, I wouldn't have started it. Doesn't have a god complex at all. I have no idea what you're saying. Yeah. Um, okay. First part of the project is to create a robotic version of a human body that can be controlled by the brain, which is scheduled to be completed by 2020. I mean... It's amazing we're only hearing about this now when, like, you know, we're at CES watching 3D printed prosthetics need to be controlled via muscle movement. I mean, surely if you can build a whole body in the next four and a three well, they quarters. Have, of they have the monkey that was walking on the treadmill, I think in the States, who made a robotic version of the monkey walk on a treadmill in, I believe, Japan. Both of those locations could be super inaccurate. Anyways, it was super far away. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know. He has poured 1.43 billion into the project so far. Who says money doesn't buy happiness <laughs> if living in a robot makes you happy? <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. Team is made up of Russian specialists from the fields of neural interfaces, robotics, neuroscience, and artificial organs. Uh, this was originally posted on Ars Technica. $115 million verdict in the Hulk Hogan sex tape lawsuit could wipe out Gawker. Which, uh, if you guys don't know, would include, uh, let's see, Lifehacker, Gizmodo, Deadspin, Kotaku, Jezebel, and Jalopnik. Uh, Gawker employs about 250 people, and they were sued for publishing a sex tape showing 
Hulk Hogan having sex with his friend's wife. So Hogan's lawyer says that the Gawker editor was playing God with my client's privacy. The sum may have punitive damages added to it as well. And the jury found two men personally liable in addition to Gawker Media. <sighs> wow. So I guess the lesson that we learned here is that Linus Media Group should only publish sex tapes if they are of its employees. With, with consent, yeah. Sure. That Theoretically, too. Theoretically, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. So now, now we know. Now we know. It's good to know. I'm glad we know. Yes. Uh, we've got another really cool thing to show you guys. Uh, this, uh, for those of you who tuned yeah. into the Twitch chat Getting there. earlier this week, um, or the Twitch chat, the Twitch stream earlier this week, where, like, I basically was only intermittently streaming. There was a reason for that. It's really cool. Um, eight members of Linus Media Group have Counter-Strike models with their faces on them, and they look freaking awesome. Um, I don't have the application installed, so unfortunately I can't show you guys the... Oh, here we go, here we go. There we go. That's yeah, you a, don't have to have the... That's a better look at it. Uh, how do I pen? Do you know how to pen? Well, okay, go to edit. Yeah. Um, get, and then once it loads, yeah, there's so some problems. It's very beta, which is why we couldn't get it working. They tell us, though, that the server should be back up next week, and we can try again because... Well, I think the server might even be live right now, but it's not, like, with how hard we hit it, trying to put, like, a whole team on there and stuff, it has major problems. And they're making, like, a North American one just for us and all this kind of stuff. Okay, well, I that is not loading, so... Anyways, yeah. it's pretty cool. It's cool. The real sense part of it is not beta. Yeah. And actually works super well. Um, I real was sense impressed. with ICs 3D scans really well. Um, yeah. If you guys saw the. What was it called? Uh, 3D scanner that I did probably about a year ago. I don't remember what it was called. I'm sorry. I had to attach it to an iPad. I scanned Taryn. I scanned oh, the room. Yeah, I remember what it was called. I did called. some other um, stuff. Dead. Anyways, um, it's like better than that. Other than it doesn't does it do room scanning? Scanning the program I use doesn't do room scanning. I think it theoretically could do room scanning just fine. Just the program I specifically use does not do it. Um, but like it, yeah, you can kind of see. There we go. I wasn't that bullish on Real Sense to be perfectly honest. Um, this demo has sold me on it in a much, much bigger way. I mean, look at that. If that doesn't That's look like a terrorist, cool. and I like, don't know what he's does. He's making a crazy smile and stuff, which is actually cool because it, it made some differentiation between different people's avatars. Um, and like if, if his head's at a weird Whoa. tilt or something, don't. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> look, at, it's like a pixel. Yeah. Whoa. If his head's at a weird tilt and stuff, don't worry about that because you can fix that. Uh, but anyways, the real sense scanning went really well. Then we had to import it into this thing, which, uh, you know. Didn't work as well. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> I usually got to work. Jeez, I don't know what's man. going on with his laptop or what's currently going on with the site. They have, like, two different beta sites they've been having us use, and one's kind of better than the other one, so I don't really know if this is the right one or not. Anyways, um, this ah. part had some problems, but we got through that, made it all work, and then when we tried to integrate it on the server, it was... It was kind of weird. It's supposed to like attach with your Steam ID so that when you connect, it puts your model mesh onto your character and only you onto your character. But uh, there were some major problems, like everyone spawning in is Colton. This so is we'd have a, like four Coltons. By the way, guys, this is important to note. This is a low resolution preview. This is not it looks, nearly as good as it is. It actually looks considerably better than that. Yeah, I sure wish I could. It looks really good. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, it, it looks shockingly good, and I wish I could show it to you properly, but like, I, I, I'm kind of giving up on that at this point. But uh, I mean, you guys can probably try tell to launch someone. it. Sorry? Launch it. Just stream some Counter Strike, dog. Uh, Deploy. Uh, Do it. It might work. It might work. Who knows? I don't think it's going to work. I guess no one would be able to see you, actually. Because um, you kill yourself and you look at yourself on the floor. Uh, yeah, but you, uh, okay, so I'll have to be, like, running backwards while I kill myself, so I ragdoll backwards. Do you yeah. want to do the next topic while I try and get this working? Sure. Mm. 
PlayStation VR to release October 2016, which is not that bad. And it costs 399 USD or 549 Canadian. <laughs> remember when that used to be 399 Canadian? Yeah, I do remember that actually. Oh vaguely. my god. Anyways, that's really freaking cool. Might not exactly be what everyone expected me to say, but that's awesome because the cost of a PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation VR is cheaper than some entire VR solutions. Which is true, but Just for the, headset. the thing that we're ignoring here is that a PlayStation Move is not included. Okay, yeah. um, you could play with the controller. And what else was not included? I forget what it was. There was something there you was could definitely just play with the controller yeah but there was some other and i can't look it up on my laptop right now but there was there was some other super important peripheral that really? would dramatically improve the experience i think it was a camera that is also not included um oh because the camera does need to see the lights that are on the headset so i don't yeah i don't remember what either exactly way it's actually was. a pretty low cost solution to getting into vr which yep. does have a dedicated processing unit which is a lot better than like a phone or something and if sony's optimizations are as good as they say they're going to be then it could be a pretty good solution for its price it and could like be. They're, they're doing actually very respectable things like saying if people's frame rates are too low we're just not allowing them to have the game on the store which is awesome because they don't want to allow shitty experiences. I'm actually really excited for it. There, yeah, there's the other article. Sony to reject any PlayStation VR games that drop below 60 FPS. Good. Yeah, like that's awesome. Good so job, they should. Sony. So like, I'm actually kind of stoked for this because, um, yeah, I hope, hopefully it's actually good. Like that's why I wasn't stoked for the Sulon G or Q or whatever it was, because it, it doesn't, Look like it's actually going to be good. Oh, dang it. I think you have to restart the restart the round or something. So I think I'll actually have to wait 3 minutes and 40 seconds to find out if my uh, if my thing will load. This is a weird server, man. Like the chickens have like Playboy bunny ears on them or something. Like, what the heck is up with these guys? Easter. Oh, Easter! Not Playboy Bunny. Yet. Easter chicken. That makes perfect sense. Why didn't I realize it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> what else we got? <laughs> I don't know. Um, George Hotz. So, Geo Hot. You guys might know him. Um, attended South by Southwest this year to announce his new company, Comma.ai. Um, yeah. Discusses plans for replacing many jobs with AI. Plans to start by eliminating all jobs in the global transportation sector, replacing them with self-driving cars. Says his self-driving tech will ship for no more than $1,000 and will wow. work on any car made after 2012. So Once I'm driving job, <laughs> yeah, me too. Once driving jobs are gone, he plans to go on to the cashiers, the secretaries, the salespeople, "Quote unquote," those people that are easy to replace with AI. All right. Wrecked. Okay. I'm not surprised. It's GeoHot. Original article was from The Verge, so there you go. Um, the Razer Core finally has a price. I think I nailed it. I don't remember what I said. I thought it was going to be at the time. Uh, but it'll cost $500, so you will actually have to pay $500 just for the privilege of putting a $500 graphics card into it to run off of your laptop. You can save $100, however, when pairing it with a Blade or a Blade Stealth notebook. I hope they've got the hot plug issue sorted out, because if they do, it is going to make the Blade Stealth 2, the next-gen Blade Stealth, a very compelling option. Current gen to little RAM. Current gen is limited to 8 gigs of RAM, which as, you know, people who have paid attention to what I think about 8 gigs of RAM will know, I do not think is enough. I don't know that that sentence made any sense, but it doesn't have to. I ran out of memory. I almost um, just did uh, sorry? a spoiler. I did? I, I almost did. Oh. And then I didn't for Scrap Red Wars. Oh, yeah, don't spoil Scrapyard I, I Wars. Okay, yeah, Scrapyard Wars is, is, is being worked on. So as of today, all the footage has been logged. People keep asking. Why does it take so long to edit a video? 
because it takes a long time to edit a video if you want it to be so good. So many stages. Um, so the first stage is to take all the hours and hours of footage. Oh my god. And not just watch them, but actually log in an application that is what for logging happened? footage. How important? What was happened? It? How did it apply to the storyline? What was Where happening should elsewhere? This go? Grading it. Uh, is there a problem with the audio, for example? Does it need extra work? Is there a better clip that could also fill in this gap? Did they retake it? So logging is now done. So now the editing, well, no, now I think Ed is currently working on um, putting together the story arc for the season. And this is part of the issue that we've run into with previous seasons. Is we I am so happy he's doing this. Haven't taken the time because we've been too swamped to do that. And even then, it takes a long time, just to be clear. Um, we haven't taken the time to do that, so we've ended up with sort of like action-packed and then oh, kind of boring, and then action-packed and then kind of boring. So we're getting away from that. Not going to be a thing. I'm su When I saw him excited. doing storyboarding stuff, I was like, what is this? And then he explained it all to me. I was like, thank you. And then just, I think I just walked away. Yeah, well, but like, that's super awesome, and I think will make a huge difference in the watchability of this graphic. Big course. part of the issue is we just haven't excited. had the manpower for it. I get it. I, and like, we've yeah. had Ed creating graphical assets and like editing LTTs and even things like fast as possible in between trying to get Scrapyard Wars done in the past. But this time, we are going to, he's going to put in his earphones for a month and no one will talk to him. And I am really excited because Scrapyard Wars Season 4 is going to be the best ever. Um, all right, so there's a new Blade 14. I have checked in with, uh, yeah, I have checked in with Razor. We are definitely getting a review unit. So um, basically not a whole lot has changed. It's got a Core i7-6700 now instead of a fourth gen processor, which is what the existing Blade had. Uh, the 256 gig model gets a price reduction. Um, it still has a 3200 by 1800 QHD plus display. It now has a an RGB backlit keyboard, a PCI Express SSD. Mm. Um, GPU is the same, still a 970M. 970Ms are pretty solid. And that's pretty much it. Not much else to Probably say. Probably a thermal thing. Original article was from Engadget, USB charging, and uh, it has support for a Thunderbolt 3 graphics amplifier upon release. Uh, so if a 970M is just not enough for you, or you don't want your palms to sweat while you're gaming, then you can use one of those puppies. You could, like, if you're, if you're plugging into something, you could probably plug in a keyboard as well. <laughs> just saying, man. I'm just saying. That's it. Show's over. I'm just saying. Nope. Nope. Show's over. We gotta go study for crime school. Yeah, we gotta go study for crime school. Okay, there's a couple topics here that I do want to hit next week. Um, but I'm tired, and yeah. it's time to go to crime school. Yeah. All right, so we'll see you guys again next week. Oh, you know what? Oh, I don't think we're gonna get away with not talking about this. GameSpot.com, original article. Oh. Sony responds to Microsoft's invite to connect the Xbox One and PS4 networks. Um, doesn't directly acknowledge Microsoft's open invitation, but suggests that it is open-minded to partnerships. That is pretty exciting. Opening the door to cross-platform play was such a huge thing for Microsoft to do. It shouldn't have been a huge thing. It should have been a thing from pretty much day zero since Microsoft owned a console and a PC platform, just saying. Yeah. But at least we are finally making progress. Um, thanks to Microsoft finally pulling its head out of its butt and saying that they wanted cross-platform play to be a thing. So developers building games for the Xbox One and Windows 10 will be able to support the feature. Rocket League will be one of the first titles to support this. Makes perfect sense given that it's a controller optimized game so the uh, Xbox One owners won't have to feel too bad about their controller in that game, that'll come later. Too in other bad, games. It, like it's actually. Yeah, I know it's like totally controller optimized. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much it. Oh uh, man, there's okay, okay, fine. We'll just have to blow through this as well. There's a bunch of actually really important stuff that we sort of didn't talk about this week. Originally posted by iCush Dreams on the forum, a T-Mobile is back, baby, announcing YouTube streaming that no longer affects your mobile data cap. 
Dun, dun, dun. So they now have more than 50 providers, including Discovery Go, Fox Business, Google Play Movies, Red Bull TV, YouTube, and more. Pretty freaking cool. It's part of their binge on program. Now, with that said, this is a uh, this is a post on the T-Mobile.com site, and some of the customer feedback of binge on hasn't been as positive, saying that the coverage of it is not necessarily that great. But hey, it's a whole lot better than a big fat load of nothing, which is what the other providers That's are true. offering you. So. There you go. It's true. Apparently, these bundled services represent 70% of all the video that T-Mobile customers watch on their phones and tablets monthly. In four months since Binge On was launched, these are pretty crazy st statistics, customers are watching twice as many hours per day. More than 57 petabytes have been burned up without using customers' data plans. And one video provider has seen number of active viewers spike by 90% and watch times nearly triple from customers. Very nice. I look forward to a future where every carrier has been John. I'm just kidding. It's not happening. All right. So thanks for watching the WAN show, guys. We'll see you again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And I know the intro isn't going to work, but it's okay. I will make it work soon. Yay. That was pretty quick. Yeah. You get a pass for that. Pretty fast. Oh, right. Boop. 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 Also, I need to see a thing real quick before I, like, actually end the show. What is going on here? Come on, come on, come on. I'm just seeing if, uh... I'm seeing if I can show you guys that avatar before I, before I take off here. Continue. Wait, do you happen to know if that one that I loaded was CT or Terrorist? Terrorist, I think. Oh, well maybe that. Oh, oh, yep. It's you. It's me. Okay. So, okay, the only way to kill yourself on this map is to jump onto the railing or kill. That also works. Yo, get out, get out. There, there look at him. Oh, he's so happy. <laughs> there he is. Look at him. Look at him. He sure doesn't stay dead long, that guy. You can just up arrow enter. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> All right. So there you go, guys. That's that's what it'll look like. It's pretty good.